Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the types of runs you can create while tracing in Langsmith. We'll then show how these runs can help you understand your application's execution. Traces can be thought of as logs for your application. And the Langtrain team has put a lot of effort into the UX for displaying traces. This is because traditional logs can be difficult to parse for LLM applications. If you've ever had to dig through huge unformatted stack traces for an LLM application, you know that there can be a lot of text to read through. When tracing with Langsmith, you can render the components of your application differently depending on their type. We'll cover the different types of runs supported and show how they're useful. First, there's the LLM type. LLM runs invoke an LLM or a chat model. Next, there's the retriever type. Retriever runs involve fetching documents or data from some external data source. Third, there's the tool type. Tool runs are used whenever we use a model that calls tools in its output. Fourth is chain. Chain is our default run type, and it represents an arbitrary execution step. You can use chains to group multiple runs into a larger process. Next, we have prompt runs. Prompt runs involve creating a prompt from a template. And finally, we have parser runs. Parser runs are used to parse some unstructured output into a structured schema. Let's navigate over to our run types notebook where we'll walk through some of the run types we just mentioned. We've navigated to our Jupyter notebook. First, let's add our environment variables. Next, let's see how using the traceable decorator with the run type of LLM will allow us to render the information on LLM calls nicely. To do so, specific formats for the inputs and outputs of our traced function are needed. The input must be a list of messages in OpenAI compatible format, represented as Python dictionaries or TypeScript objects. The output key accepts several formats. You can use the choices key and specify the role and content of your output message, or you can do the same with the message key. You can also pass back a simple dictionary with the role and content keys, or even a tuple where the first item is the role and the second is the content. Let's run this code with and without the run type set to LLM. This will let us compare the differences in Langsmith. So first, Let's run it without the run type of LLM. And then let's add the run type. And let's run it again. Now let's switch over to Linksmith to compare the two. Switching over to our tracing project in Langsmith, we can select both of our runs we just made. And we can click compare to view the differences between the runs. As we can see, both of our runs have nicely formatted inputs and outputs. But you'll notice that when we specify the run type as LLM, we get a new icon to highlight the LLM step. This is useful for debugging. When viewing a trace, we can quickly assess where LLM steps are in the flow of our agent, and we can also use this run type as a filter to analyze LLM calls in our project overall. Let's go ahead and set up a filter. If I add a new filter on run type and set the value to LLM, you'll see that we can filter down the traces in our project to only view the LLM calls. And let's take a closer look at this particular trace. Changing the run type to LLM doesn't just change the icon. It also enables this button here in the top right corner called the playground. This button is a very useful tool where if you click it, you can see that we will be able to bring our exact LLM call into our playground interface. The playground is a sandbox where you can quickly iterate on your prompts and see how it affects the output. We'll be covering it much more deeply in a future video. Next, let's return to our notebook and take a look at our second run type. We've returned to our notebook. Let's talk about our second run type, 
the retriever run type. A lot of LLM applications require looking up documents from vector databases, and retrievers are how LLM applications do this lookup. Because documents are so fundamental, Langchain has special rendering to make them easier to view. In order to do this, we need to pass in documents according to a specific format. They need to be a dictionary with a page content, type, and metadata key. Note that currently in this notebook, the format is incorrect. It says doc type instead of type. Let's run what we have to see what the default rendering looks like in Langsmith. Next, let's fix the key to use the correct type key. We'll also set the run type as retriever to correctly log this run into Langsmith. Let's run it again. And next, let's go to Langsmith to view the two runs. We're back in Langsmith. Let's compare our two retriever runs. Looking at the outputs, we can see that when we don't set the retriever type and format our documents correctly, the output becomes a difficult to parse JSON object. When we do pass in the right format for document rendering, we instead get a nice digestible list of our documents. Additionally, we can see that when we set the run type to retriever, our run gets a special icon indicating its type. Just like with LLM runs, this can be useful in debugging and filtering. Let's set up a quick filter to show all of our retriever runs in our project. We'll set the run type to be retriever. And we can see we filtered down to only the retriever calls in our project. Finally, let's return to our notebook to view our last section, tool runs. The final run type that we'll cover is tool runs. Some models provide tool calling functionality, including OpenAI. What we have here is a function we've implemented called respond. In this function, we make calls to OpenAI to generate a response for a given query. Respond has access to a mocked tool called search web, which we've bound to our OpenAI model. This makes our model aware of the search web tool and lets our OpenAI model decide whether or not to call our tool. In the actual implementation for our search web tool, you can see that we return a mocked no result found message to our chat model. This way, when our OpenAI model tries to search the web, it will think that no results are found. The last thing we do in our respond function is that we call OpenAI to generate our final output. Let's go ahead and decorate our tool function with the tool run type. And now we can actually run the respond function to generate our output. Let's go back to Langsmith one last time to look at our output. In Langsmith, let's take a look at our call to respond. We can see that in our first LLM call, it recognizes that we have access to a tool called search web. This tool is actually invoked and it's rendered with a special indicator in Langsmith. The results of our search web tool are then used to generate our final output. To recap, we just covered the different types of runs and how you can use them to add clarity to your traces in Langsmith. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.